In this video, I'm going to go over one of the uh, items on the CCIE lab exam blueprint, and that is the OSPF stub router feature. Now, this is a feature that's used to improve stability. Um, it basically allows you to bring a new router up into a network without immediately routing traffic through it. And it also allows you to gracefully shut down or reload a router without dropping packets that would normally be routed through it. So in this network here, I have five routers that are all in the same area. And what we're basically looking at is I have a loop back here and then another loop back here. And all these, you know, this is the best path between them because everything is just a giggy link, all things being equal. You know, we're looking at a hop count. So this is the best path through them. What I'm going to do is configure router two with this stub router feature and we'll see how you know osbf re-advertises LS lsas and how it forces the, the traffic to go the other way the first thing we'll do is let's just verify an r5 we'll do a show ip route osbf uh, we'll begin at the word gateway just to clean it up and we could see that the loopback of one, which is 1.1.1.1, is going via R2, which makes sense. It's we could see, you know, just visually looking at it. So let's go ahead to R2 and we'll configure the first one of these options, which is to configure the router to advertise a max or infinite metric before shutting down the router. So you would use this to make sure that traffic is flowing in another direction before you just, you know, hard shut a router. So it's in OSPF and the command is max metric router LSA. Um, sorry, metric, not metrics. Max metric router LSA. And we can verify this on R2 with do show IP OSPF. And right here in the middle, you see originating router LSAs with maximum metric. And then the condition is always the state is active. So we're currently advertising the max metric and we always will. If we go to R5, check the routing table. Sure enough, we see that we're routing through four instead of two. And if we look in the database, for the router to LSA, we can see here that the metrics are 65535. So that's how this feature works. Now, what we would normally do in this situation is reload the router and then it would come back up and it would be advertising the proper metrics again. Now, the important thing though with this is don't save the config because if you do save the config, the router will come back up and it'll still be advertising maximum metrics. So just, you know, a little tip to keep in mind there. So I'm gonna get rid of this command, um, no max metric router LSA, and let's configure the other version of this, which is allowing you to reboot a router and bring it up without immediately routing traffic through it. The way this works, it's also the max metric command but we use the on startup keyword. We have two options. The Well, the first one is just the timer, which is what I'm going to configure. But I just wanted to touch on this second one, which is wait for BGP. Now this um, certainly would be something in the scope of the CCIE exam. I just don't have BGP running in this network. But what this does is it configures the router to advertise that max metric until BGP converges or until the timer expires. So it'll wait for BGP to converge. Once BGP converges, it'll start advertising the regular metrics. If BGP doesn't converge, it'll just start advertising the max met or the regular metrics after the uh, 600 seconds, which is the default time. What I'm gonna do is configure a timer. So I'm gonna configure it for 120 seconds and then save the config. This should give us enough time to be able to see what's going on, run some verification commands, 
um, after I reboot the router, which I will reload. I'll pause the video for a couple seconds um, while it reloads, and as soon as it comes back up, we'll jump in and do some verifications. All right, so the router has reloaded, and you can see here the neighbors are all up. So let's first go to R5 and see while we're still routing, and we're still routing through four. And if we do show IP OSBF here, you can see originating this line here, originating router LSAs with maximum metric, the time remaining is 41 seconds. Um, the condition is on startup for 120 seconds and the state is active. So if we go to R5, we take another look at that LSA and we can still see that maximum metric. So what I'll do is wait another, well, we got 12 seconds, so I'm not gonna pause the video. Um, let's just give it a few, show IP OSBF, five seconds remaining, four, three, two, one, zero, hopefully. Okay, so now you can see it still says originating router LSAs with maximum metric, but you have to look at the conditions here because the state is inactive. So we're not actually advertising them right now. And it tells you the reason why is because the timer expired and we did originate them for 120 seconds. So if I go back to R5, take a look at my LSA, the metric is now one. And then if I take a look at the routing table, I'm now routing through two. So this is a nice little feature, um, greatly helps with stability. Um, it's also, you know, one of the line items on the CCIE lab exam blueprint. Um, I have the blueprint up on another screen. Let me bring it over for you um, and get rid of the writing that I have there. Um, so under OSPF, 1.4.e4 is a stub router. So, you know, good feature to know just to have in production, but also it's on the lab exam. So thanks for watching and we'll hope to see you on the next one.